right, today we're starting in again in Brenda's kitchen with kind of in a corner by the door and the window to my outs outside yard, which is very beautiful and green today. And I could have gone out there and looked at things, but I've been working really hard trying to get this class set up for you. So just make sure that you respond back to me that you got the email and that you're trying at least to look at the assignment that I pointed out to you and tried to talk you through. And today the assignment was uh, doing the sleeve. We worked on that a little bit yesterday on the YouTube. But to read through page 96, take a look at this beautiful sleeve that they have pictured here, how it hangs so nice and straight, and um, how it has a nice fluffiness at the top. It's not just flat and puckery and whatever, it's beautiful. So to go through the steps, I tried to talk you through on the email, the steps that they're talking about here, and then here is talking about putting in the sleeve head to make it nice and rounded on page 98 and then on 99 it starts talking about the shoulder pad which I remember talking to you about at school and telling you that I bought my shoulder pads at SAS and then just took off the trico that was on the top of them and so that it came out with this nice, uh, uh, like a filler, like a quilt batting sort of fabric that's nicely shaped. So that's what is going to go in at the shoulder. <clears throat> and what I'm doing right now, as, as I'm talking, is I'm pinning the other sleeve in. I, I assembled and put in the one sleeve on the other side. But here I am pinning this second sleeve in into the right spot. I thought I had it in the right spot to begin with. In fact, to be really honest about it, I stitched it in. And I could tell it was kind of hanging a little funny. And then I went in and checked how it was inserted compared to the first sleeve and I could tell but I didn't have it in quite right. So I picked it all out and I'm putting it in once again. And so this is my message to you. If your sleeve doesn't look good when you get it in, don't try to tell yourself it's okay. If it has puckers or just doesn't hang right, make sure that you go back in if you have to, and I have, I've told you that this is one of the, as important a skill to learn as any, is to learn how to remove stitching, remove part of a garment and make it right. If it isn't correct in the beginning, you can make it correct. Just keep trying. The people, I say this I know all the time, the people who don't succeed are the people who quit trying. You'll succeed. You'll succeed. I sometimes think about some of the things that I've worked really hard to make and I've taken it out, taken the pieces and parts out and made it really nice and perfect and then I think, and then how many times did you wear that thing? And that's a good question because sometimes you have to let something that you've worked that hard on sit for a little bit of time before you can wear it because I've told you before you develop a love-hate with some things that you make and um, if that happens set it aside finish it and set it aside and then go back and admire it so you kind of develop that sort of feeling about the things that you sew too all right so let me show you i think we you were able to see what the other sleeve turned out 
like yesterday and I have it tucked inside. This is how the, the head of the sleeve turned out and I pressed it. I have it tucked inside because we're going to go in in a few minutes and I'm going to show you how the hem was done. But this sleeve, let me just show you. I have it all pinned in here in place, ready to go. And so this is how I want you to pin it utilizing this little bias strip. All right, you're gonna be sewing over the top of that. But we're just going to baste it into place. So just try to hand baste it in at the 5 8 inch line all the way around, baste it into place, and then you check it to see if all of the ease is distributed correctly. I tried to emphasize in the email how you distribute that um, ease and it tells you in the textbook how to do that. You just kind of have to try it. I mean, there's no way I can do it for you and I can talk you through it, but the best way to get it figured out is just to go in and Put your ease in, press the head of the sleeve, try to get it as smooth as you can before you install it, and then go in and pin it into place like I've done here. Match your notches, get the double notches in the back of the sleeve and the single notches in the front of the sleeve and then just go in and pin it into place. And so um, we're stitching along the arm side. All right, so here we are um, hand stitching over the pins to get this sleeve into the right spot. And you know, I told you, I think, I don't know if we got it on camera, but that I had stitched this in by machine. I had <clears throat> hand basted it in yesterday and stitched it in by machine earlier. And I picked it out because I could tell it did not look like the other sleeve. It wasn't hanging quite correctly. And as I checked closer, I saw the reason why. Um, and so, I just didn't have the head of the sleeve right at the the shoulder seam when I cut this out and with dragging around from class to class for all these months my notches have kind of gotten frayed and so I really wasn't positive where the head of the sleeve was where my little notch was anymore because my fabric is kind of fraying so I should have probably put a tailor tack in there, done something to help myself uh, know where that, that continued to, to be. Um, get another needle here. Always try to keep several needles threaded so that you have a backup always along the way. I'm just gonna do, I've got white here. I'll just use that white one we don't have much farther to go. So here we are. You see how I'm trying to baste a 5 8 inch in from the edge of the seam, from the edge of the fabric, and um, to get it sewn in here, baste it in by hand, and then we'll check it to make sure it hangs properly and that it, it matches the other sleeve. The other sleeve seemed to be in just about right. Now, one of the things that I want to tell you too is um, it's very important to stitch straight, to stitch, not uh, move off that stitching line as you're stitching in sleeves. But sometimes we do. And I found myself doing that a little bit um, when I was stitching this in yesterday. 
And so what I went and did today was straighten those up. Part of it is that this little machine is a, a pretty old model. It's a wonderful little Foff machine, but it's we're thinking it's from the 1950s and it doesn't have the 5 8 inch markings on the uh, throat plate like we do in our classroom at school. So that's kind of a bit of a problem when you need to know where the 5 8 inch mark is. So here, so I had, what would happen is I'd get a little bit off my mark and I would have to go in and stitch it straighter, okay? But you can, you can kind of see down in here, I've got it all uh, stitched in by hand. And let's check to see what it looks like on the public side, if it looks like it's in pretty well. That looks pretty good and you're going to have to make sure that all of your basting threads that you remove all the basting threads sometimes I've been places wearing something I made and I find as I sit having worn it several times a basting thread that I didn't take out <laughs> or a pin one time I was sitting with a pin sticking out the hem of the jacket of the sleeve that I'd worn the jacket several times and there was a pin. So here I am going to pick out those pins. So check for smoothness. Check for it hanging properly. And this is folded up because I'm going to talk about this in just a minute. And then I'm going to baste in or pin into place this, which is the sleeve head. All right, it's gonna go, here's my shoulder seam, and here's my little notch that goes at the shoulder seam. So right inside that shoulder seam, on actually the underside of the sleeve, the top of the sleeve, is where I'm pinning in this and you know, you can sew your sleeve in first and then stitch this in by hand or stitch around a second time around the sleeve head. Uh, what I ended up doing on the other sleeve, and I usually do it this way, is I will pin it in right now and then I will baste it by hand. And then when I actually sew the sleeve in on the machine, I will just stitch over this um, from the other side. I try to stitch on the arm size side, and that's what it also tells us in our in the textbook. It tells us to do that too. But you can stitch it on this side if you if you want to. It um, one of the reasons that sleeves are often stitched in on the arm side side is that it doesn't as you're if you're stitching on the sleeve side sometimes it will pull your ease towards you and it just stays better distributed <clears throat> if you're stitching on the arm side side but um, you know as long as you're aware and if you've if you've stitched your sleeve head in really well sometimes it will handle well enough um, to stitch it on on this side but um, the recommended side is to do it on the side of the body of the jacket or the arm size side so now I'm going to go with a, a needle and thread and stitch the arm side or stitch the excuse me the sleeve head uh, fabric the softer fabric um, the felt or wool uh, lamb's wool and just just stitch it into place okay just hand stitch it into place and I'm going a little bit to the inside closer to the the seam edge 
I'm going a little bit inside where we're going to actually end up stitching. Stitch the lamb's wool sleeve head into place with a single thread, okay, and with our pins in place. And then we're going to go over to the sewing machine and I can remove the pins, I think, and uh, we'll stitch the sleeve in. Okay, so we're going to start right at the underarm seam. That's usually the best place to start sewing in the sleeve, okay? And just always clear the underneath area. You don't want to catch things that are going to have to be picked out. And then just try to stitch along the, the 5 8 inch line because that's generally the length of seam allowance, the width of the seam allowance that we need here. And if you can kind of see, in here is some of what I stitched before. Some of it I got a little bit out of the alignment of the straight, straight line like even right here and so what I would do is go back in once I stitched it in and see how it how it looked and then go back in and fix that part you can go back in and stitch over it again and make it uh, straight all right and so here things are kind of getting a little tucked up so just lift your presser foot you can always lift the presser foot and straighten things out and check underneath to make sure that this batting is staying in the place that you want it and right over here it's a little bit thicker so sometimes it'll lag down um, as it goes but just stitch your sleeve in Sometimes you need to use the little scissor point and stitch around to the, if you if you've prepared well enough to sew in your sleeve, it goes relatively fast. Sew around, clear to the other side. So that where we started, right there under the arm. And lift and cut off your thread. Now, let me just show you a couple of things. As I go back through here, I'm trying to see how straight I sewed and I think I went a little bit off right here. I need to curve that more. So what I can do is start back and this is a really important skill to have. Put your needle down and uh, see how I zagged out this direction I'm going to straighten that and that's what you do when you put a sleeve in you go back in and check if you went kind of inward or the wrong curve it will show on the outside of your sleeve you have to do it correctly and so here we got our um, sleeve head sewn into place all in one one swipe around and so now we've got our nice little sleeve installed and then we'll just go in and press that all right this is the same sleeve at the hem at the bottom and I did a pad stitching of the hair canvas in my sleeve hem. This is the, the very bottom, okay, of the sleeve. And I measured the length so that it fit my arm and hit where I wanted it to on my wrist. Some people like sleeves a little longer. I happen to like it just above my wrist bone. And so that if I have any kind of a cuff it can it can pull down and show underneath that sleeve but some people like their sleeves long some like them a little shorter make sure to insert your arm into your sleeve and get the 
the shoulder portion nicely placed on your shoulder so that you see like this and I, I should have my sleeve in or my arm inside it but I've already measured so that you know where to fold it up okay and this this is where mine was folded up and then I had gone in and I'm just pinning the very bottom of it I had gone in and put um, a pad stitched in strip of interfacing <clears throat> and I actually right here I'm just going to take those pins out so you can actually see it so I just pad stitched it in um, and you don't have to do that this is that webbing soft interfacing pressed on right here it's an iron on and so is this one remember this is the really soft uh, iron on interfacing and that could have been what I put in here <clears throat> I just went ahead and, and did the hair canvas strip just so that here you've got three different possibilities okay in the in this fabric that I'm working on the hair canvas is soft enough that it it was fine but these are kind of <clears throat> some different techniques this one is stitched into the bottom edge uh, right underneath the public side now I could have put it on as this one is into the hem this one is stitched or ironed on into the hem and so when we hem this up, it will be, a tiny bit of it will be past, like right here, will be in right underneath the public side, and the rest of it will be placed into the hem. And that's a good way to do it too. You know, I can't tell you which way to do it. And I know sometimes in, in class, some of you really wanted me to make the choice for you which way you should do things and I just am not going to tell people because they may do it the way I said and find that they wish they had done it some other way the way you find out what you want is by trying it okay but you all knew that this webbing was a very nice soft interfacing and this this interfacing was even softer and this little portion of it right here is underneath or on the side of the, or inside the public side. This would, this would be the public side. So that's basically how you can do there's those three different types of placing and interfacing into the cuff or the bottom hem of your sleeve. All right? And then, uh, do a press, put my sleeve roll inside, and then use the press cloth and pressed over the top. Just steam it over the top, and you can just you can just move the roll, even if you want to, just keep it in the same spot, and just move the roll all the way around to get your hem pressed into place. Let me show you my iron. This is my old favorite iron. I see how dirty that is. I love it though. All right, so here we have this in place. Now, there are uh, different ways to hem it. <clears throat> We're going to use a catch stitch. That's what I want you to use. I want you to use a catch stitch. You notice that I am using one one line of stitching and I'm going away from myself and I hope that you have done a catch stitch before you should have in your other courses and then I'm coming onto the folded side I have to open this up this is the piece I'm hemming into place and this is the body of the garment that I'm hemming it to all right so I'm catching this one, catching it away from me, and then catching this one, the little rolled side, and then I'm going to go back to catch the hem edge, and then I'm going to come up here, and I'm pricking the fabric away from myself. 
all right and you've got to make sure that you don't pick up so many threads of your fabric that you have your stitching show on the public side because this would be your public side so make sure that you're careful to just pick up enough of the threads or of the fabric that it connects it but it doesn't expose where you're stitching it should be a pretty hidden stitch so catch stitch is enter fabric and push away from yourself on the one side and then enter fabric and push away from yourself on the folded side so that you're attaching your hem that way I'm going to show you the other way this way we have our pressed in line so on my jacket that's what this is the pressed in line and I'm stitching the lining this is, this is like it's going to be my sleeve lining I'm stitching the lining to the area right above where I'm going to stitch my hem in and then I'm going to show you that that slip stitch hem this is just my sample after I get to the end here Okay, so here we've got this, we're going to say this is our sleeve lining at the bottom of our sleeve, okay, all stitched in, and it's going to flip back, and what we're going to do is turn it this direction, and we're going to slip stitch, slip stitch, same way we just did, we're going to slip stitch this into place, okay. Here's my knot, do a, a good little roll knot, get it in there. And so this will slip stitch our um, hem and the lining is already attached. Kind of cool. And this is how I like to do it. And you know, one of the reasons I like to do it this way, and you have to stitch above where you sewed right here where you sewed in your lining you have to put your slip stitch just above it because that way it won't show or interfere with the lining I do it this way because when you think about how much you use the bottom of a of a jacket your arms and hands are always entering the jacket and the wear, there's a lot of wear on the jacket at the wrist. And so if you stitch the lining in by machine, it keeps it in better shape there. So do you see how that goes? It's the same thing. I'm stitching the slip stitch, which is entering the fabric that the lining is sewn to, which is the hem okay and then entering the other side and and stitching away from myself to attach it to the body of the garment so here we have it's attached and our lining is already sewn into place now the way I do my linings is I stitch them in here and then I let them roll a little bit down this direction so that the stitching is going to be up half inch three quarters of an inch maybe from um, where it actually folds over and sits the reason for that is when you get let's say the whole sleeve lining comes out this direction and this is some give with your arm going in and out, this will make your sleeve not pull because of the lining being too short or catching up under the arm somehow. Okay, so that's how that works. But on the other side, we slip stitched it in place and the way, let me show you this, I don't want you to not see this one. What we would do on this is place it where we want it and pin it into place so we fold up however much we're gonna 
tuck up and then make a place to stitch it into place. And what we'll do is we'll come and put our knot in once again and single thread, oh, maybe double thread on this one, you know, honestly, because we want it to be strong. You use a double thread wherever you want strength, okay? So that's, and where you want it to be invisible, you use single thread. So we're gonna go up inside that little folded area and we're gonna come right just into the hem not onto the public side, just into that fold and hem area that we already slip stitched into place. And this is how we stitch this. Come into the, always into the fold of the lining and slip stitch it into place this way. Okay, just like this. And this can kind of be a little tricky to get just the thread. The thread is going to be right settled right back in that little folded edge and where you poke your needle out and bring the thread out right there is where you go into the fabric of the hem and then you immediately go right back up into that little fold and pull it through so you hide your thread up in that little folded, folded little edge. This is my actual jacket, and this is where I stitched on my lining. Okay, I stitched on the lining at the bottom of the sleeve, and now I've got my thread, and it's because I'm using the brown thread, the brown lining, the brown everything, it's hard to see but this is where I am doing my catch stitch on my own jacket. So here I enter on the garment side and then I'm gonna catch stitch the opposite side and hold the thread under my thumb so it doesn't uh, knot up on me. I know you guys knew that I went ahead, I told you at the beginning in class that I stitched together my lining. That way I could keep my lining pieces. And this I have my lining turned so that the seams are turned outward, all right? So these princess seams over the bust line, uh, you can see how on this side I clipped these so that they would spread wider as I pressed it and these I had to clip so that they could overlap. Sometimes you might need to wedge clip those but these all had to lay flat. See how that one surely does lay over the top of the other so that it doesn't buckle and, and add bulk. But I stitched all of them in you can see the side seams and then I had quite a few in the back all of these had to be done the same way press them flat all of them press flat mine starting to ravel because it's been dragged around so much right up here on pretty you see my little clip marks up at the top here these always fold over all right, and let me turn it around this way so that you can see what I'm talking about. This is how it's going to be placed into the jacket. It's going to be the little seam right there, and then this pleat allows for there to be pull at the arm and on this at this arm too so that the lining doesn't interfere with the movement of the jacket. That's what that's for. Stitch all the seam allowances. Um, sometimes your guide sheet will tell you that you just want to install the front lining because um, this right here is going to be sewn onto the facing that the buttonholes are attached to. And then the other side, the buttons will be attached to. This stitches to that. All right, that's why it's short. It's not very wide. 
because the rest of the jacket will be right here in the facing. I made a mistake in the fact that I didn't stay stitch all of this. So stay stitch it because you see I have kind of a bias edge here that is prone to stretching and you can see it kind of stretched there. All right. So make sure you are careful with that. And when you're doing these types of princess seams, remember that this piece is stretching over a, a curved piece here. And you might have to put ease into this piece so that this piece can stretch over it. And then once it's pressed, it should all, I can see right in here, I probably have a little bit of ease right in there. Okay, so once I turn it with the stitching turn to the inside, you can see, just make sure to give a good press to it so that it, it looks smooth. And so here's the sleeve lining right here. I pressed a wrinkle in that I'm going to have to get out. And here I pressed up my hem and pressed my seam allowance open. These do not need to be pinked or edge stitched because they're going to all be hidden inside. And I'm going to go in and trim this fraying too. But just make sure match your notches everywhere they are. There's a purpose for them. On a sleeve lining like this, I know that I have a little bit of ease in the elbow area so that it, it bends better more easily. So prepare your linings like this and if you need to just set them aside until we're completely ready to install them. So good luck, work hard, read the emails I send and email me back so that I know you got it and that's how I'll get your attendance. But we're going to get this done and you're going to get credit for your work this semester. Um, and if you will do your best, you will be surprised at how good your grade is. Bye!